Now, this was way back on Friday, but let's talk about Paris Saint-Germain's scoreless draw against Monaco. Uh, and how much Kylian Mbappe enjoyed coming off at halftime? Well, first of all, it was a great nil one of the best of the season. It was really good. Secondly, all the talk is obviously about Mbappe being subbed off at halftime mm-hmm. by Rus Enrique for not for injury, not for, for a decision because to make the team better, he said. And then Kylian to get changed during the break and then not sitting with on the bench with the rest of the team but walk all around at the Stade Luido to go and sit in the stands with his mum and his entourage three rows over above Nasser Al Khalaifi and all the PSG Iraqi I thought it was just an incredible image okay, you, you, Luis Enrique flexing his muscles I mean come on I'm not sure you can call it incredible at a normal club with grown ups in charge you do this, you get fined. Oh, yeah. It's you get not fined. acceptable. I it's just disrespectful to your teammates. He massive. should know better. He was the and, captain as well on Friday night. And, and by the way... He wore the armband on the By picture. the way, you try pulling that crap at Real Madrid. You just go and do that. You know, already they don't like you. Already they're, they're thinking... That's not true. Already they're thinking what you did before. You have to win us over, right? I, these stories yeah. get reported. Oh, it's I not, think it's, he wants it's just to make not a, smart behavior. He wanted to make part. a point, I think. But I don't know where you go. There was an explanation on Saturday morning between him and Luis Enrique. We will have to see, but it's not looking good, I think. Let's visit Texterland. Yeah. Leon, we're fighting on a good run with Stonewise. Yeah. But then they get hammered at home by uh, Lons and your boy Joseph Ugurlian. That's Joseph. right, Joseph. Who I bumped into on Regent Street the other day. It was lovely to see him. What's uh, he doing on Regent Street? What, his shopping? office is not far. Yeah, he was going to a meeting, uh, walking down. I was walking up. So we had a lovely chat. Lons were much better. I mean, Stonewise and Lyon have done a really good job with the new signing. There was no Lacazette in that game and the replacements were not good enough. But... There was always going to be a time where they play a team that is far too good for them and Lens were far too good for Lyon. So Lyon will still have to try to get the points in against those like, smaller teams, but against the big teams, they were never going to be good enough, I think. So even at home, they got destroyed. Well done to Lens. Really good win to, to bounce back after what we saw in, um, in Europe, especially. That was really important. So... That's good now. It's good. And also they lost uh, the previous weekend. So it was a really good win for Lance. More text though, because you can never have enough of the... the oh, I was going to be... I was going to be... <laughs> that would be nice. Could, ne- could never have enough of John Texter. He spoke at the FT Business Summit, uh, Sports Summit last week, Gab, and he complained about financial sustainability rules, of course, design, designed to keep the rich clubs on top, he said. And he suggested that he would welcome a World Super League because you can not stop evolution. So a World Super League for people, it's not like the Super League. He said, I think, he would want to see uh, Botafogo play against Lyon, for example. So actually, imagine that the whole world play a league. Yes. I mean, that sounds great. I'm just imagining the carbon footprint. um, Until, like, this is beyond silly. (laughs) Until you solve the massive resource inequality. I'm, I'm assuming Botafogo's entire wage bill, right? yeah. Botafogo have done well in Brazil. I'm pretty sure their entire wage bill is maybe, what, one-fifth, one-tenth yeah, I was gonna say that of Lyon, yeah. even less than that of Crystal Palace, the other club that Texter's involved in. Yeah. They're the club, by the way, he's been trying to take over, but yeah, yeah. Steve Parrish, and it's, I love this, this Parrish versus Texter. I, I, I started to become Team Parish, which kind of tells you, <laughs> which tells you, if you know my history here, it tells you a lot. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, the, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. The financial sustainability rules exist, whether you like them or not. And yes, this whole point about, oh, it's a cartel of the top clubs. Yeah, we've been hearing this from your people at Paris Saint-Germain, yeah. from City fans, from Newcastle. Yeah, you know what? Most investors want this because it's their only path towards sustainability and profitability. Investors, like the ones who have invested with John Texter so that he can provide a return on their investment. Yeah. So if we want to get rid of all that and just go and just let anybody spend as much as they want, uh, won't that be fun? Yeah, let's do that. And then let's have, <laughs> let, no, no, let's have Leon with Texter and his investors' money up against Newcastle and City and Paris Saint-Germain with no restrictions whatsoever. And let's see who stomps all over, all over who. This is what I don't understand about this man. Yeah. Like I, it just makes no sense. Yeah, no. And look, John, if we're being unfair, like I said, I know you prefer the FT, whatever, right? But you have an open invitation to come on Gavin Jules Meets and, and explain this vision to us. Very true. 